In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to insert a table. Now, in future lessons, we're going to use tables to create forms for your site. But in this case, we're just going to insert a regular table where you might want to display data on. And then I'm going to show you how to import data onto that table. So let's take this site we've been um, creating and messing around with. And I'm thinking of inserting a table below this picture here, putting it in the sidebar content. Well, you notice this giant blinking line here. That's basically the cursor blinking. So if you haven't already clicked there, click there, and then hit return. Now the cursor is back to normal size. And notice how it expanded that section. So now we have the gray background expanding out to fulfill whatever needs it, it believes uh, we, need, we want here. So, we're now going to go up to Insert Table, or Control-Alt-T. Now, when you click that, you're given several options here. Basically, it's like Excel. It allows you to do a lot of the same things, um, make the same modifications, uses the same terminologies. How many rows, how many columns do you want? Well, I'm thinking for this small section here, three columns sounds about right. And, I don't know, we could do... We could do 12 rows, we could do 11, doesn't really matter. Now how wide do we want the whole table to be? Well, I'm thinking it should be as wide as, this, as the picture to make it look standard. So let's cancel out of here and take a look at that picture, click on it once, look at the properties and let's see how wide it is. Okay, it's at 200 pixels. So now let's click back here, go to insert, table, all right, we'll leave it at 12 rows, 3 columns, and it's probably not defaulted to this, but um, that is the correct pixels, because that's how wide the uh, picture was, 200. Border thickness, we'll leave that at 8 for now. Um, cell padding and cell spacing, just leave alone. I'll show you that in a few minutes, how that affects the look of the table. Now, here's something important. Um, do you want a header row? Basically, this is none, left, top, and both. And you've seen header rows. Header rows are where there's no data, actually. It's just a title row. So over here, it's grayed out on the left, showing that the, the headers are on the left. Here, just the top, and here, both. So you might see this a lot. Maybe you have days of the week up here and months on the left column, and then all your data here. Um, in this case, I'm going to show you, let's use top. Hit OK. Leave everything else as default. You notice how it shows you that the width is 200 here. Now we have this constricting box around here, which we can um, expand, contract, and adjust just like we would a picture. But we won't mess with that quite yet. Now, if you hover over the very top of a column, we get an arrow. And if you click it, it selects that whole column. So now we could adjust the color for that column, um, the font, whatever we wanted for that whole column. Or we can do it by, by cell. Just select one cell and change the properties of it. Um, also, these little arrows up here, if you click on them, just like Excel, you can insert a column to the left or to the right. All of them have that. Now, we don't have those over here to insert a row. So if we just right-click over the table, we're given a lot more options. Table. Select the table, the whole table. Or split the cells. Watch what that does. Split the rows. Number of rows, two. See? So now you have these large rows here, but then it split these two that you had selected. That was the box we were on when we hit that. I'm going to control Z to undo it. just wanted to show you what it did. So a lot of the same things um, in several places. We can insert rows and columns from here. Um, delete rows. Um, increase the row span. Increase the column span. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Paragraph settings. Um, alignment settings. Um, again, fonts, styles, size, templates. Um, make an item in one of the boxes a link. We can do that from here. We can paste. 
But in this case, I would like to insert some data. So how do we do that? Well, let's go up to Insert, Table Objects. Could insert rows and columns here, but we're going to import tabular data. So tabular data is basically a file normally created in an Excel type of um, program where each field is delimited by either tabs, commas, semicolons, colons, or, or something else. These are probably the most common, tab delimited or comma delimited. So I created a document just for testing purposes, just put a bunch of numbers on it. And you, you've seen them probably before, they're .csv files. So this was created in Excel, for instance. So we grab the file that we want to import the data from, double click or click once and then hit open. It knows automatically that's a comma delimited file, so you don't need to adjust it. See, if we, if we chose a delimiting um, characteristic that was not correct, like tab, watch what it does. See, it, it messes up and puts all of the numbers in the same box, so we don't want that. Let's insert again, import tabular data, grab the file again, data CSV. Now, a couple other options here. You can set it to a particular percentage, or you can fit the data to the section. Now, you've got to be careful here, because let's say we, we did this, set 100%. That sounds right, right? You might think, hit OK and it still put it all in that one square. How do we, how do we prevent that? Even though they don't, they're not separated by common, columns, it's as if it, it just put everything in that one square and moved everything else out of the way. Well, what we need to do, let's control Z, undo. What we need to do is select all those squares we want to insert the data into. So just click and drag, click, hold, and drag. Now we can go to Table of Objects, Import Tabular Data, Grab the file again. Now, let's try this set to 100% and see what this does. Well, it did put them in all the boxes, but you notice how it expanded it off of um, our section here. And you're not able to drag and adjust at this point. So, rather than um, setting it to a percentage, let's undo. I'm just showing you what these different options accomplish. And we're going to select it again. And we're going to fit to data. And then leave all these the same, what they're defaulted to. There we go. Now, it's not pushed over off of that column to a place where we can't adjust it. It's within here. Now we can grab this again and pull over. Now we see as we're pulling that that top number is changing. We want to pull it until it gets to 200 and release. Perfect. So, you can adjust the individual um, column and row heights. For instance, you could pull this over and as you pull it, it's adjusting the other column because you've already told it, I want this whole thing to be 200 no matter what, the whole width of the whole table. So as you adjust, it's got to make other adjustments to cramp other columns if you want this one that particular size, like so. Same with rows. You can expand those, like so, and make a row larger. But I want to keep it as it was, so I'm going to hit undo, undo, and there we go. And I'm thinking also that that data wouldn't look good in that color because I just selected everything and now maybe a red. Yeah, that looks a lot more readable. Now, cell padding, a couple of these other options. If we click on a line, like in the middle here, it'll select the table. We want the whole table selected where we see these little arrows or the options to drag. Once the whole table is selected, now instead of looking at the properties of the um, of the data in the table, we're now looking at the properties of the whole table. So, we're given the number of rows, which we could adjust here, the width again, which we could manually put in a number, 
rather than dragging as we did. Now, notice this, cell pad. Watch as I adjust this. I'm going to put it to 12 and hit tab. Ah, do you see what it did? It increased the padding around the number to make it larger. Now let's erase that. Now, notice cell space. And I'm going to put 12 in there again, too. You see what that did? It kept the box surrounding the numbers small, but now increased the spacing in between. So it gives you a different look for the table. And one more thing, border. Watch what happens when we adjust this. We'll go to 15. Ah, you see what that did? That just changed the three-dimensional look of the whole border here. See that little three-dimensional look outside the table? That's all that does. So those are some uh, tricks with um, with tables. And I'm probably going to erase this data and, and put some other stuff in here after I end this lesson. But there's tables and all the details therein. Enjoy.